information is transferred from your engine through to your gearbox and from your gearbox through to your wheels. And the reason why we're doing that is because there are two different gears involved in that process. One is a spur gear which is involved in your gearbox and then a bevel gear which is involved in transferring the motion to your wheels. We're going to go through it slowly, there's no talking in this, um, but I want you to not talk while we do it, please. So I'm going to pause it often to show you and explain a couple of things to you um, in the video. So that's very important. Um, no, it's not necessary to record the video, but if you want to record my explanation, you must well do. Okay, but the video will be on YouTube. Okay, it does explain it to you, there are little boxes that pop up. Okay, basically here you've got your engine, your flywheel and your gearbox over there. That is the basic setup in any car okay, on the road. That's how it's set up. This one is just a four cylinder, you get your V6s, V8s, etc, etc. This is a V4, okay, four cylinder engine. The more V's you have on your, I don't know if anybody actually knows it, you know the V8 actually has eight V12. cylinders. Eight yeah. cylinders. Okay, V12 has 12 cylinders in it. Okay, which runs six and six next to each other. Okay? Now, that's just a basic force of the car, which is your normal, normal run of the wall car. And you have each of your cylinders there, your piston with your pistons in. Okay, there's your pistons inside them. They have connecting rods which connect to your crankshaft. Your crankshaft then turns what they call your flywheel, which is that thing over there. Your flywheel then turns the gears and the shafts inside of your gearbox, which we'll get to explaining just now. But for starters, um, for those of you who don't know, of course your petrol goes in over here. It is ignited by your spark plugs. That makes a little explosion. That explosion pushes your piston down. Okay? Now, that movement over there, if I go on a little bit further, that is way too loud for my life. Okay. <laughs> Now, can anybody remember what the definition of reciprocating motion is? It's a back and forth motion. Yeah, simple as that. It's a linear back and forth motion, up and down, left and right. And the motion of your piston here is up and down, reciprocating. It just moves up and down. So we've got to get this up and down movement into wheels turning around. Okay, that's the move, that's the transfer we've got to have. So your piston simply moves up and down. That motion is converted to a rotary motion, your circular motion, by your crankshaft. Okay, so there's a joining rod there, connecting rod between your piston, which just moves up and down, onto your crankshaft, and that turns your crankshaft, and your crankshaft in turn turns your flywheel. Okay, that's the basic transfer of your movement in your engine. Then, this is the part that none of you know. Okay, how your clutch actually works. Now, as per the names that they've got up top here, your flywheel, the yellow thing is your clutch plate, the red thing is a pressure plate. Now, what happens in, okay, I'll explain it to you as this goes along. Okay, because they show you the clutch pedal as well. Note this for me. Tail, Keep track of that blue part over there, the axle over here, as well as what the red thing gets up to, where the clutch pedal is pushed in. Okay, there's your clutch pedal, it runs on hydraulics in this one. Anybody ever heard somebody saying my clutch cable broke? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, new cars don't have clutch cables normally. They have a hydraulic system. The older cars have clutch cables. So a cable connecting your clutch pedal to your... Um, you'll see now. Connected to the pressure plate. There you go. Okay, so that get that now that's pushing your clutch pedal in. That pushes against there. Your pressure plate is lifted up. Okay, just check that movement again for me. I'm going to go take it back a little bit. Watch very carefully here. Okay, Put the pedals pushed in. Come on, just do it Now, before you see the pedal being pushed in here. Have a look at the motion that's happening. You'll see that this is turning, your flywheel is turning, that shaft is turning, and all the gears are turning as well. And then watch what happens as soon as the pedal is pushed in. What happens? That's still moving, but everything after that stops. 
Everything off the dead stops. Now how on earth does this happen? Huh? I'm going to tell you. Rhetorical question. Okay? Rhetorical question. Now, your flywheel and everything is still turning when you push your clutch pedal in. But what happens is this. This clutch plate over there is connected to that shaft over there with teeth. So it grips onto it. So when this plate turns in a circular motion, that shaft will turn and it will turn everything else. But if this yellow plate over there is not moving, nothing's going to turn. And what this pressure plate does is this. When you have your clutch up, that pushes your pressure plate against this yellow plate and the yellow plate pushes into your flywheel. And the connection between the two is what allows your clutch plate to move. So if there is pressure from the pressure plate, the pressure plate pushes against your clutch plate. If that pushes against your clutch plate there, onto, there then it pushes your clutch plate onto your flywheel. And that connection allows your flywheel to transfer the circular motion onto your clutch plate. And if your clutch plate turns, then that shaft turns, which turns everything else. As soon as you push your clutch in, it pulls the pressure plate off of your clutch plate, which then breaks the connection between the flywheel and your clutch plate. So everything here keeps moving, everything there stops moving. Follow? Everybody? Okay, simple as that. That's how your clutch works. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Etc., etc. Okay, watch now when you pull your clutch pedal back up again. Okay, you've done what you need to do, you can touch it, and that pushes down again and everything starts moving again. Simple as that. That's, your, that's how it clutch works. Now, let's get to your gears. Have you even gotten to all that already? Okay. Now, the next little part. Parts of your gearbox. Now, your gearbox, you have your selector mechanism, which is your gear, your, your, your gear lever, okay, which you sit within your car. You don't see anything else that's all underneath you when you're in your car, okay? That's what you select first, second, third, fourth, etc., etc., reverse. Then over here, you've got your, your, man, your shaft over here, which has a, a spur gear on the end of it. That spur gear connects with another spur gear, which is attached to your lay shaft. Now your lay shaft is a shaft, all these red gears at the bottom, all of the spur gears at the bottom there, are permanently connected to the lay shaft. Simply meaning if the lay shaft is turning, all of those gears turn at the same time. They're all connected. But then, moving on to the yellow shaft over there, your main shaft, that there is connected to your drivetrain. For those of you who know what drivetrain is, um, that yellow shaft over there has got a whole bunch of blue gears on it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six blue gears. Those six blue gears are not attached to that shaft. The shaft goes through them, but they can turn without the shaft turning at all. And that is done by putting on a bearing. Okay, there's a bearing inside there, and a bearing has got ball bearings inside of it, and a whole bunch of them in a little packed case. And those ball bearings allow this wheel to move freely without causing too much friction on this shaft without that shaft moving at all. Okay? It's the complete opposite to the red gears. All the red gears are permanently attached to the lay shaft. Whereas the blue gears are not attached to the yellow shaft at all. That if that thing moves, that ain't gonna move. However, these over here, your dog clutches, those are connected to the yellow shaft. If your dog clutch turns, your shaft will turn. Okay, all got that? Follow? Now, when you want to change, at the moment this car is in neutral. Okay, no gears are engaged at all. If you want to change into first, then the following happens. So I'm just going to fast forward this again. It goes through a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, now, changing into first gear, watch very carefully what happens. You're going to watch this dog clutch over there. 
Keep your eyes on that dog gunch. First one. No, last one there. Now, changing into first gear. Yeah, that one over there, watch what, watch what happens. Okay? Now, what happened there was the gear lever was, was, was moved, and in moving that gear lever on to first, into the first position up there, move this dog clutch over here to the left. And those teeth on the dog clutch mesh with the teeth on the spur gear, and now the dog clutch starts turning, and that turning of the dog clutch started to turn the yellow shaft. That is putting your gear car into first gear. Okay? Okay, then they're going to show you how that motion is transferred. Now have a look here. The motion comes from there, down through that one, up through that spur gear, and then into that shaft, and you get your turning motion on the end. Pretty straightforward. Now, as you go along, I'm going to speed this video up because it's just going to show you all the other ones. Okay, you'll see pushing into second gear goes to the goes to that side, and then pushing into third gear, you'll see the middle dog clutch move. Okay, it hits into third gear, and then you're going to see that that middle dog clutch will move to the other side to get into fourth. Oh, I get your question now. If it's finished, then you'll see that that one will move there to get into fifth. And then, very important, which I'll get to you now, the last one, that moves into reverse. Okay, yes, you had a question. I think if you ask yourself, but I was going to ask that if the gears get higher, does the photo force I'm getting to that, Bob. Oh, he asked about it, and I said I'd get there. Yes, right the back. Sir, I know when the dog class is vicious in the other one, what happens in the gaps in between with the first and base? So, what happens if they eat? Ah, very important question. He just said to me, so what happens if when this dog clutch moves across, that this gear, the gaps don't line up? What happens? Yes? No, that's not when the car schools. That's when you hear... Yeah? When you hear that, that, that sound, when your parents have tried to change gears, and you hear that... Like a crunching sound, that's because they haven't pushed their clutch in far enough. Now, what happens there is very simple. Okay, this is the important part. If your clutch is pushed in, we saw what happened. This entire thing stops moving. So it gives the dog clutch time to go and wedge into that gear over there. Okay, it doesn't stop moving, it stops, it's, it slows down. Okay, it slows down. And that slowing down allows your time for your your teeth to find each other and mesh. Which, and then when you pull your clutch up, then it's meshed already and the gear goes. But if your clutch isn't in, and you try and change gears, that crunching sound is because this system is still moving very fast. And you're trying to wedge this thing in there by pure luck. Okay? Trying to get those holes meshed together at speed, which you can't do. Okay, you can actually. You can actually change your gears in a car without a clutch. It is possible at certain speeds. You have to know exactly what speed you have to be traveling at for one gear, one the dog clutch to move in absolutely perfectly and to mesh perfectly for a different gear. It is possible. But because it's so very difficult, that's why they make the clutch. So that your motion is slowed down here. So that your dog clutch can fit in with ease, and then you'll take your foot off your clutch pedal, and away we go. Yes? So wouldn't, um, if it didn't go in, the teeth didn't match, wouldn't it strip the gear? It would. That's why when you hear that crunching sound, that ain't very good for the gearbox. Okay? Everything inside there, something's getting hurt, which you don't really want. Because yes, that will mess up the gearbox. Okay. Um, now, thank you, thank you. Keep focused here, please. Keep your bag and your book alone, Mr. Okay, thank you for the question. Now, um, when it comes to different types of gears here, specifically with spur gears, when you've got one gear moving in the one direction, which, which direction is the other gear moving in? Oh, in opposite. Direction. Okay, because when your spur gears mesh together, when their teeth mesh together, they force each other in opposite directions. So, with this, with these gears here moving in a clockwise direction, all of these ones are moving in anti-clockwise direction getting your wheels to move forward. But then for reverse, 
This setup over here is your reverse. And you'll see over there, there's a little idler gear in there. Remember that? Yes. Yes. Okay? And idler gear is put in so that you can get your driven, your driver gear moving at the, in the same direction as your driven gear. So all of these blue gears will be moving in an anti-clockwise direction. And that one over there will move in a clockwise direction, opposite direction. That gives you reverse. That's why the little yellow gear is in there. It's the only one with the little yellow gear, the only one which will get your car to go backwards. All follow that. Okay, so that's your basic gear system and how it works. We're going to get to the whole torque velocity ratio thing now. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit more to get to the last part. Now, that's the last thing. Bevel gear. Bevel gear, yes, good. Okay, that's a bevel gear. Now, you always wonder, how on earth does the circular motion that you get going in that direction get transferred to wheels going in that direction? And that's where bevel gear comes in. Your differential, otherwise for short known as your diff. <laughs> yes, I know. My fault. That's what it's called in short for a motor car. Yeah, not what you guys are thinking about. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's not the role of the video. Bye, bye. Okay, differential. <laughs> now, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, your differential changes your motion from going that way to splitting up and then going onto your wheels. And that is, if you, if you correctly summarize your information on, on um, bevel gears, you will know that what a bevel gear does is it changes the plane of motion at a 90 degree angle. Okay? So your plane at the moment of motion in your car is going forward and it changes it at a 90 degree angle to go to the side, which gets your movement going in the correct direction for your wheels. Okay? So that gets that turning motion from going that way to turning that way on your wheel axles. Now that over there, if you look on the other side of the car, looks like a big box about that size. Okay? That's what it is, yes. And you'll see that normally there's only one of those. Either one at the back or one at the front. If there, hold on. If there's one at the front, you have a front wheel drive car. And the back wheels are just long for the ride. Now what do I mean by that? Quite simple. All of the torque, all of the power, that your engine produces goes to only two wheels. The other two wheels on the other side are just there along for the ride. They follow the amount of speed that the other two wheels are producing. So if you've got a front wheel drive car, only the front wheels create your speed. Okay? If you've got a rear wheel drive car, which most cars nowadays are, that will give you your speed from your rear wheels. However, a four-wheel drive car, your buggies and that, have two differentials. They've got two, meaning that your force is, is goes up to all four of your wheels, which gives you a lot more control. And the reason why you want a lot more control, so that you can grip, because you go on a lot rougher terrain. Anybody, anybody ever been in a one of those fancy buggies where you have diff lock? Yes. Okay. Now, what happens there is, is that you have a mechanism inside your differential which locks your bevel gear from going in the opposite direction. So that your car can't, your wheels can't reverse, they can't go in the opposite direction. So there's a mechanism in here when you press that button which put, get, pushes into place and it stops your bevel gear from moving, it only allows your bevel gear to move in one direction. That's what diff lock is. Not quite. Okay, um, that class has gone out there. Yes. Hold on, I can't hear you. That's why I didn't take my glasses out there. Yes? No, no, hold on.